In the book, Our Tree Named Steve, you'll notice that David Cattro uses watercolors in his characters, in the backgrounds, everywhere. And the style is very blotchy, especially when he uses multiple colors, like this scene here. Even when the colors are mute, sorry about the glare. And in this one in particular, you can see the different colors uh, layered on top of one another in the clouds in the sky. So we're going to try to emulate that style when we use our watercolor pencils. I'm going to switch over now to my artwork that I've been working on for a while. And I first start out with the background. So I'm leaving all of my main characters, my main items, uh, blank for now, and I'm working around them. That is how you always should work. You work from the back to the front, background to foreground, always. You need your water. You need your chosen colors. I'm choosing to use cool colors in my background. I have my brush. I have my paper to blot the brush before I go into the watercolor pencils with the paint with the water. And I also have my test strip. On my test strip, I've been testing out all of the colors that I'm using. Uh, in this in particular drawing, I don't like how bright those colors have been becoming. So on my test strip, I'm trying out some gray over top, and I think that that's where I'm going to go. But first, I need to finish putting my colors in. So to get that blotchy look that David Cattrall uses, I'm going to choose one of my background colors. Uh, let's go with the green. And I apply it in a small section. Sorry for the announcement. So I'm kind of coloring in different directions, and I'm letting the color fade out by getting lighter and lighter around the edges. I'm avoiding these little spots here and here. And let's just compare the size to my thumbnail. Roughly the size of the top of my thumb is how I'm working. Nothing bigger than that. You're not going to color the whole thing in and then add water to the whole thing. This is a process step by step. So I dip my paintbrush in the water, blot it on the paper, and I'm coming at it from the blank white side of the paper in towards the main character. Because as you can see, you're pulling a lot of that color down. And if I went from this direction up, I would have a very hard edge of color up here. And I don't want that. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And now I'm going to use the same green in another place, maybe over here. So I'm going to work around my background. Once that's wet, I can't touch it till it's completely dry. And in your case, that will be the next day. So I'm going to put some green here, let it fade out a little bit on the edges, get lighter and lighter. Blot my brush before I go into it, and I'm going in towards the characters or the objects. And then I'll move around. Once I'm done, I think, with the green, then I'll go to uh, another tone, like maybe this light blue. Right here in this area, I can see that it's got a lot of green going on, and so maybe I want some blue. I'm just feeling this area here is wet. I can't work there, so I'm going to move over and work a little bit right here. I'm letting my colors overlap each other. I tested that out to see if that would work well on my strip, and it does. All right. So as you can see on my, on my picture, this has really been, it's taken a while. So I'm going to let you see it from this side over. And I've really been working with four different colors on this background. And my end result will have the gray layered on top to kind of tone down that bright color. I'm not going all the way to my edges with the color. I'm just letting it bleed out uh, so that there's a a buffer zone between the edge of the color and the edge of the paper. So don't take your color all the way to the edge. Leave that thumb width distance, purely blank. And the next time you see this guy, I will probably be working with warm colors on the characters themselves. 
and that will help the, these main characters pop out away from that background. That's the color scheme I'm using.